The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, Sandhill Consultants and Irwin by Quest uh, session on why upgrading to Irwin Data Modeler 12.5 is a smart move. Uh, with us on the call today, we've got a couple of uh, well-known figures. Uh, you've got uh, Kevin Weisenberger, who was our a senior consultant on the Irwin side. A lot of our clients have had interactions with him. Uh, in addition to that, we've got uh, both John Kigan and myself, Robert Lutton, uh, who are here to help our clients out. So uh, cast of characters you've known over the years, and we'd like to welcome all our uh, clients to this uh, webcast. Uh, so Kevin, go ahead and go to the next slide. And the one after that. Yes. Uh, thank you. So, uh, so today is a special uh, webcast event for us. It's been uh, quite a while that we've seen so many uh, updates in one particular release. Uh, so we wanted to kind of uh, go through those updates. Uh, 12.5 is the latest version uh, for those that have been with Erwin uh, from the, uh, the very early days of the versions 3 and uh, 7 and 9 and or through the the years of the 2020s, and now we're back into a uh, a normal uh, issue number or normal release number 12, 12.5. So um, we're going to be talking about how you know using Erwin has got a lot of key feature, features about moving your data maturity ladder. Uh, so you get, you'll see a lot of cool features that are in the Erwin uh, DM uh, product set. So uh, Kevin, go ahead and go to the next slide. So just for uh, some of our uh, people out there, uh, hopefully uh, you know uh, and have heard of Santel before. Santel is a uh, Irwin partner, has been an Irwin partner for, oh gosh, uh, 20 plus years. Um, we have obviously spent the, the bulk of our time in the data management space. Uh, we've got our data modeling standards tools. We support Irwin. We also do training and support for the other uh, data modeling tools, but let's not mention that uh, here. Uh, we are big fans of the uh, Sapphire ERP uh, discovery module. We provide urban training. We do upgrades. We provide urban support. We have expanded into covering the data intelligence suite for Irwin as well. We've added our own uh, data governance framework on top of that. Uh, and we've got uh, additional uh, workshops and education and, and training uh, that uh, we can provide to clients. We also, uh, because of Quest acquisition, Quest has its uh, data-based uh, management tools, Fog Light, Spotlight, uh, Toad, uh, Toad Data Modeling tool as well. We also support that. So those are the areas where Santel plays, very big still on the EDM Council, DCAM certified partner, uh, know the uh, DIMBOK, certified on the DIMBOK, and obviously we've gone through certification on the old CMMI uh, DMM, which is not part of the SACA. So uh, with that, go ahead, uh, Kevin, on to the next slide. Uh, just quickly for our uh, guests, we will be focusing on the lower left-hand side of your screen here. It is a busy screen. We'll be focusing on Sapphire, or on, sorry, on the Irwin DM. Irwin DM has obviously Toad and Sapphire in those data modeling repository tools, pulling in metadata from all types of both uh, SQL and non-SQL uh, database and cloud environments. Uh, we provide our data uh, modeling framework, which we call EMSOS, which is our modeling standards, uh, which is obviously taken, a, you know, a, a leaf out of the page of the DIMBOK, DCAM, and DCAM for providing data modeling standards. And so on the other side of the house, we provide data governance standards through our uh, oversight product called Compass. You can find more information on our website. And of course, the Erwin Data Intelligence Suite. We'll be focusing solely today on the new additions to the Erwin Data Modeling 12.5 uh, presentation. So Kevin, uh, with that, a quick uh, introduction. I will pass it over to you and you can start talking to our guests about the greatest, latest and greatest features in 12.5. And that's very true there, Robert. Um... With this release of 12.5, uh, Erwin has uh, added some really nice new features, especially um, 
part of the focus area will be on the left-hand side with the Irwin Mart portal and uh, specifically, um, not in, just to let you know that the Mart portal, which replaces the um, Mart administrator at, in name only, uh, but uh, in the 12 series, uh, Irwin now supports a uh, cloud-based version of the Mart. So uh, that's one of the uh, nice new features that came about uh, in version 12, but um, just want to emphasize that uh, in this, uh, the listing of the 12.5 features. We also have uh, ER360, which is a visualization tool of the uh, Irwin data models uh, that you can um, manage, review, view, um, uh, which sits now on the um, Mark database, uh, where if you when you go through the configuration part, uh, the ER360 gets configured, uh, the tables get created for ER360 on the Mark database itself. Then we move down to the uh, enterprise compliance, the EMC. Uh, it's a it's a mechanism for um, uh, either MART privileged or non-administrators to apply standards across their MART models, catalogs, et cetera. Uh, we'll be uh, going into that uh, in detail. Uh, then we have the enterprise glossary, which is a, a way to employ your business terms, your uh, standards, uh, which are um, bound together to build a uh, govern enterprise level standard for your your model um, your mart models that reside in uh, the uh, catalogs and then uh, um, one new feature that's part of the Irwin DM uh, local data modeling tool is the project uh, Explorer uh, think of uh, project Explorer as a uh, a way to <clears throat> have your, your models uh, in a contained um, centralized area that you can uh, start your application development in a, basically in a single project. And when you, if you have your, your models in a project, it's a single click where you open up the uh, Project Explorer that could, it will open up uh, one to many data models that are part of the Project Explorer. And uh, just uh, on the right-hand side, we uh, on the Irwin side, uh, uh, Teradata 17 is now a supported release as a target uh, database. In 12.5, MongoDB also is has been added support for version 5X and 6X. Uh, Alloy DB support is 1.1, Neo4J is 4.4.x. Uh, SQL Server 2022 is uh, supported on this release of Irwin. We also have um, Quest has uh, partnered with uh, Databricks where they have a, uh, the Databricks as a targeted database supports the uh, Unity catalog. Uh, Okta support, the SSO single sign-on support for Snowflake. Uh, Bitbucket has been added uh, alongside uh, uh, the uh, BitLab um, and uh, BitHub. And then we have uh, some um, database support for RangoDB, Avro, Google BigQuery, Cassandra, Couch Couchbase, and um, JSON. There's a denormalization uh, for uh, NoSQL database models uh, where you could, uh, it's a, an advanced denormalization where you could make your selections during the uh, target database change as needed. And there's some uh, recent uh, UI updates, like for example, the uh, SDI indicator on my model diagram, uh, stand, um, that that is now part of the uh, sensitivity sensitivity uh, 
checkbox that's part of the model diagram. You could sort um, column order as needed in NoSQL databases. And there's uh, some enhancements regarding demand loading to improve uh, uh, open, uh, opening from the MART as well as uh, scheduler uh, for reverse engineering. Uh, Git support, you have, um, there's an interaction within the MART administrator where you could generate a DDL based on versions in, in the MART portal. I'm sorry, I said the MART administrator, but it's the MART portal. And then we have a DM Connect for DI where you could do a round trip from Irwin DM uh, MART models to the DI suite. Any metadata updates from the DI, you could import those back into uh, your MART. And, and thanks, Kevin. Now, we're not going to be able to, in the time allowed, to uh, demonstrate each individual feature, but we definitely would do want to demonstrate the uh, the high value features in this particular version, Azure All Urban Clients. And I did forget to mention that, A, this is being recorded. We can send this recording out to everyone uh, that attends it and for those that didn't. And also, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, put them in the question area and we will address them at the end of the call. Kevin, back to you. Thank you, Robert. So we're just moving uh, along on, on the uh, presentation here. So. What does 12.5 bring you uh, on the Irwin side? So I broke this down, we broke this down into um, robust um, modeling techniques and greater flexibility. So Irwin 12.5 provides advanced modeling capabilities that allow users to create and manage complex data models with ease. Uh, Erwin 12.5 is highly flexible, allowing users to work with a variety of databases and integrate with other tools and systems. So uh, what we're going to take a look at are mainly on, on this side are, is the information uh, for NoSQL, JSON, uh, uh, Avro uh, document database as well as Data Vault, Databricks, uh, Dimensional Data Models, and um, the industry models uh, that are that you can install uh, with 12.5, uh, and we'll we'll show those as well. And I forgot about about the new feature called uh, uh, Projects or Project Explorer. So on, again, on the robust, uh, robust uh, modeling techniques, uh, Erwin Data Modeler uh, 12.5 is still a relational database data modeling tool, and it continues to excel at designing and visualizing uh, uh, ERD uh, models. But you want, we want you to consider upgrading to 12.5 uh, for the following reasons. Um, Erwin added the ability to model NoSQL databases utilizing round trip engineering and model synchronization, uh, forward engineer and reverse engineering of code and integration. Uh, so part of the one of the some of the NoSQL database supported uh, target databases are ArangoDB, Amazon Key, Key Spaces, Cassandra, Couchbase, Dynamo DB. Uh, Google BigQuery and MongoDB. Moving down to the file format um, or document database, JSON and Avro uh, file formats are now supported in the uh, release of the 12 series release. And then in addition, you have your graph database, Neo4j. Uh, you could re uh, forward engineer, reverse engineer a graph database as, as Neo4j. And with the data vault modeling, you have the ability to um, create your your models or change your modeling property model properties to support the, uh, the data vault of 2.0, uh, which is supported across all target databases. Uh, di dimensional models uh, has been in, been part of the um, the tool since uh, I believe 4.0. Uh, so that's, uh, that's been there. 
uh, these common data models, which are the industry models, CDM, these are uh, uh, data models that allow data and information between applications. Again, you, when you install Erwin, you'll have a choice for uh, installing or adding those data models during the installation. Uh, and then you have your global uh, reporting where the MART uh, offers um, different types of uh, uh, reports uh, that can be uh, run across the, uh, the, um, the MART uh, as, uh, as, a, as a way just to see those particular models that are, that are cross-referenced within the uh, MART portal itself. And then let's let's take a look at uh, as part of the robust uh, techniques and uh, flexibility is this um, project project explorer uh, feature that uh, you can now use to organize all your uh, database models in um, in the in the Irwin application. Uh, so you can use that uh, in the um, develop development phase uh, where you could take these data models, organize them or add new data models, and you could have them in a single project um, as needed. So one of the nice features about having these, these models as part of the project is you could open up the project and it, uh, in a single click, it brings you to those data models that you have that are part of that single uh, project in Erwin DM. So let me just uh, quickly move over to Erwin. We're gonna, I'll show you some of the uh, NoSQL models, the JSON format, uh, graph database, and data vault, and we'll do a little um, demo on the Project Explorer. So let me just go here, and you'll see that uh, I've, uh, I've connected and I've, I have four models that are open in the, uh, the modeling tool. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, publication uh, system uh, model is your classic uh, relational database uh, data model. So let me just go to the physical side of the data model here. And I'd like to show you that within the tool, if I wanted to change the target database for any reason to say, for example, a MongoDB um, NoSQL, you have this advanced uh, denormalization and it's really a, a, a really fast one click and it goes through the process of, of making those changes. And the, um, what you could do is uh, select as needed any type of uh, collections and fields. And once you, it goes through the process, it, it will complete. Yeah, sorry for the, the slowness here. Maybe I should have taken a couple of different um, models. Or uh, I'm sorry, but here we, you'll see that it, it's a single click and now you have your 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 denormalized NoSQL MongoDB uh, uh, target database data model. So it's a it's a really quick and easy way to take your data model and do that NoSQL uh, structure change. Um, another example of the MongoDB, which is uh, again you could um, I transform this into uh, from eMovies. Uh, you'll see that we have your collections. Your business terms, which is a new uh, tab that will uh, show in, in um, with the business glossary. And yet you have your uh, field properties with the supported um, uh, data types here. So that's the uh, MongoDB uh, data model um, uh, representation. We also have a data vault model that we, um, that was, uh, uh, that's been added to this release of Erwin. 
So if I go to model model properties, you'll see that the uh, data vault uh, 2.0 is a feature that's supported. And when you go here, you can make your changes uh, for your, your objects. You could easily change the, um, the, uh, the, the objects to supported um, um, data vault um, uh, point in time, reference tables, et cetera. Moving to the uh, graph database um, representation. Here, this is a re, uh, Neo4j reverse engineered data model. Uh, so I have the graph. I, you could also have uh, a different representation uh, by setting up your diagrams. This one shows the, the relationship, uh, uh, physical relationship names of uh, between the, uh, the nodes. And you'll have a, a whole bunch, a, a couple of different ways to represent the data model as needed in the graphic, graphic uh, database or data models. A really nice feature that uh, Erwin uh, added is anytime you uh, select a uh, collection or a node, as in this, it will give you the information uh, on the, the, the uh, on the uh, properties of that. Um, of that node in this instance. Uh, so uh, that's a nice uh, feature. You also have a way to see the object counts as well as information on a, a, an overview of, of the objects in this, in, when using the, um, the uh, uh, properties pane. So these are these are new uh, these are the four types of data models that uh, I'd like to show uh, on this was the uh, NoSQL JSON uh, as well as the Graph and Data Vault uh, Project Explorer. If I go to uh, another instance of Erwin that I have, you'll see that this is a as a new um, new tab on the ribbon is the Project Explorer. You could obviously create a new object but I have a previous uh, object uh, project that I had created. And you'll see here, as soon as I select to open that project, the two data, mo data models that are part of the project will open up and you could switch back and forth between these, uh, these data models. And uh, it's just a, it's a, a really a, a single uh, point and, and click way of uh, working within the um, within the tool itself. Uh, what you can do here is you could save these uh, at, to um, to your Mart, but also you can generate scripts uh, and alter scripts from uh, from the the, the uh, models that are saved directly to the um, the Project Explorer. So I'm going to return back to my slides. And what I what I like to go over now is with within the Irwin 12.5 workgroup edition, I just want to show you the the um the architecture diagram uh including the uh the database types. You still have your on-premise uh, database, but you also have the Erwin managed, Erwin by Quest managed uh, uh, database in the, in the cloud. Uh, over here to the right, um, in the second tier, is the ER diagram, uh, ER 360 portal, which will be showing um, later in the uh, presentation. But it's now part of the Erwin Mart. When when you initialize the uh, the ER three hundred and sixty with a uh, a valid uh, license key within the Mark portal, uh, we'll be taking a look at the business glossary, and you have your Irwin DM, uh, which is the uh, the interface between uh, open up the data models and uh, taking the you uh, taking advantage of the uh, different type of da target databases. Um, in the tool itself. So these are the uh, business glossary, the web browser, 
which is managed by the MART portal, and the uh, EER360, which is also a web browser that's, um, that's, that can be accessed uh, by, by its own URL or from the MART portal itself. So what, what can Sandhill do for you folks is um, what I'm showing here on this table is that the latest release of the Irwin Mart or Workgroup Edition is 12.5. Um, we uh, we at Sandhill have helped out customers with uh, with upgrades as far back as version eight. So we do have the capability to assist in, in any type of upgrades before uh, version 9.8. So that includes 7, uh, 8, uh, version 9, and up to 9.7. We have a, a, uh, an engagement that's coming up uh, for 9.7 in the coming weeks. But I just wanted to show you that there are a couple of uh, intermediate steps between moving from the lower, the um, lower unsupported releases of, of, of the model ma manager, model mod, et cetera. But uh, there's an intermediate step that you have to upgrade from any of these versions to 9.8 in order to get to 12.5. So moving from 9.8, these are basically, if, you're, if you folks are on these versions of the MART, uh, you could easily, um, upgrade your, your mark to 12.5, or just uh, feel free to reach out to us and uh, uh, Robert and I will go over uh, that later in the, um, in the presentation. So I, one, uh, a couple of new, um, new options within the, the modeling mark portal uh, uh, Irwin Mar Portal are these uh, are these advanced data governance and enterprise uh, glossary features in the tool. So both the the EMC and the enterprise glossary are the are the new features in the tool. So not only um, in the Irwin Mar Portal you have your your um, your place setters for setting up your users, your your profiles, your permissions, your um, your uh, naming standards, name mapping, uh, naming standards mapping. Uh, you have these two new um, new uh, selections or uh, pieces of functionality: the enterprise uh, modeling compliance and the enterprise uh, glossary uh, within the tool or the Mart Mart portal. So Erwin 12.5 um, so this this version of Erwin, so it, it, it when it comes to enterprise uh, modeling compliance, it typically involves ensuring that the database, the data models conform to established uh, standards, best practices, and regulatory requirements within within your organization. So uh, the 12.5 can be used to help achieve this compliance by enforcing the data data model and standards, documentation, and collaboration. So how does it how does uh, Irwin 12.5 do this? So from this listing here of um, compliance or how 12.5 does this. Um, number one, it defines the modeling stand uh, helps define data modeling standards start by you could start this by establishing a set of uh, modeling standards and best practices that need to be followed by by you and the organization you can customize Irwin data modeler uh, to enforce these data modeling standards you can create uh, custom templates and naming conventions that align your organization's compliance requirements and then you, what you could do is create and document your data models. So use the Irwin 12.5 12 to create your document, uh, create and document your data models. This ensures that you, instead, you adhere to established standards. 
And then once you have that information, your models, you can validate that uh, information using, uh, using DM that can help you check the compliance of the data models. These, uh, and again, the, this is what you can do with your, the EMC feature within the tool itself. Once you have that, you, you can go to version control and collaboration, generate documentation, compliance reporting, and we'll be taking a look in at, at that with, within the tool itself shortly. And then you train your data modelers on establishing standards and best practices, ensuring that they understand and follow compliance when working within the Irwin data, data modeling 12.5. So by following these steps, you can use Irwin data model to support your enterprise compliance within the organization. Next new feature is the enterprise glossary as part of the MART uh, portal. So the MART uh, enterprise glossary uh, is very helpful in maintaining consistent and standard standardized data definitions and terminology across the organization. You can integrate an enterprise glossary with Irwin Data Modeler which helps ensure data modelers, uh, business analysts, and other stakeholders are using a common language understanding uh, when working within the data models itself. So here's the how. So uh, the first step would be to choose an enterprise uh, glossary tool. Uh, Erwin DI would be uh, the preferred choice, but you could, you could uh, choose from various tools that are available. So you wanna choose what's best for your organization's need. Then you could create the or create or import these glossary terms. Uh, there's a direct connect or direct import from the uh, Irwin DI suite to bring the business, business uh, terms, glossary terms, data definitions and glossary elements into the Mark portal under the enterprise glossary. You also have an import for uh, other tools as well. Once you have that, you could uh, integrate Erwin DM with the enterprise glossary, where um, the integration options with the data modeling tools, Erwin, these integrations typically involve uh, connectors, uh, import, export of functionality that sync the glossary terms uh, and definitions within the data models itself. Then you could uh, link the uh, business terms, the glossary terms in data modeler, use these, use, use these glossary terms when working on data projects and data modelers uh, use the glossary terms when naming and document data elements, et cetera. And then you can maintain and update the glossary terms as needed. And then, you, of course, you have your document documentation for training purposes, your quality assurance, et cetera. And you, you can um, audit regularly, uh, audit the data models to ensure that compliance with the enterprise glossary uh, meet the, uh, the needs as needed. So let me just move over to the um, to my uh, Irwin Mart portal, and I'm just going to log out of this. And you'll see that the uh, Mart portal is, has has for 12.5 has the uh, the name change from the Mart administrator as I log in here. And basically nothing has changed on the user side. You could uh, define your users, um, your profiles, uh, the out of the box. Uh, uh, Mart portal has the uh, architect viewer admin uh, modeler. Uh, you could also um, 
clone a a um, a profile and add features uh, to to the uh, to the profile as a customized profile. Once you have your profiles, you you would add your permissions. And just a, a small summary of what um, what you can do with the existing um, uh, uh, Mart portal, which is the same, basically as the same as as the Mart administrator. You have your uh, catalogs, your containers where you save your models. You have your central uh, naming standards uh, mapping, where the the Mart portal administrator or any other uh, uh, user profile can manage your words and your abbreviations uh, and attach them or apply them to MART models. So let's take a look at the uh, enterprise uh, compliance, the EMC. So here you you have your um, your enterprise compliance. You can, what you do is you would uh, create your, your policy. And here you'll see that I've created two uh, policies um, previously, and I'm just going to select my um, my my comment test. Uh, once you have your your selections for the um, the uh, for the the rules, the um, uh, the part the 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 selections for the either the comments. Uh, in this instance, but you could also do this for any other, uh, you could do a physical names, you could do it based on definition, comment, et cetera. So you, <clears throat> what you would do is you would uh, take one of the out of the box uh, policies and make up your own uh, rules and, and apply them as needed to, to, the, um, to be added to against those data models as needed. So here you generate some reports. You could view the reports previously run against. And if I take a look at one of the uh, one of the reports, sorry about that. You'll see that um, it gives you a statistics on running uh, that those uh, comments that didn't have the correct information. So what this does it it gives you a a report of for example on the entity customer the custom, uh this particular uh uh comment does not have the correct information has comment that has bad characters so even though it's um pointing this out to you you would actually have to go into the data model and make those uh corrections as needed and these are all for standardizing your your needs uh, for compliance. So moving now to the enterprise glossary, you'll see that um, here uh, you have your your business glossaries, but you also have uh, what I've done pre uh, previously is I've gone in and imported several of these uh, um, business terms, uh, definitions, descriptions, et cetera, uh, into, the, uh, into the enterprise glossary. There's a way to um, import, but there's also a way to um, import uh, from, if you take a look, here you can import or you could download and you could add these these glossaries uh, as needed. So once you have your business glossaries, your terms, uh, uh, you would associate that with a data model that resides in the Mart. And then once you have those that data model, you uh, let me just sorry about that. Let me just go back one. And I have a, the DM. And then you go to your mappings. 
<clears throat> select a, this particular data model. And then you could uh, add the uh, any of the terms from the information that you that you had brought in, and then you save them. You could save that off. Or do an auto map, and then set up a report as needed. So, once that information is in there, you could uh, open up. You would go to your data model, and it does the mapping. Uh, it generates the mapping for you. Uh, so then you go in to Irwin Data Modeler. Let me just go there quickly. And hopefully I can find the, the data model that I used here. Nope, that's not it. And the, the, the information would be uh, populated as the uh, business uh, terms uh, mapping. So that's the enterprise um, enterprise compliance and business glossary um, section here. I'm going to take a look at the enhanced uh, collaboration uh, information here. So uh, Erwin, with the coll collaboration um, of the the uh, tool for the Mart, they added the uh, you not only have the additional features that are in the Mart portal that I'm going to go over. There's there's also the new ER360. So what the um, the Mart portal is a obviously a uh, multi modeling uh, environment that uh, uh, that makes uh, you use uh, coordinated large scale modeling possible. And the ER360 is your unified uh, and fi central visual visuals of data models that help you manage and govern your Mart models. So with the, uh, some of the new features that are part of the Irwin uh, Mark portal are the uh, uh, catalog uh, displays the uh, sensitive data, SDI, uh, sensitive data indicator. Um, it also tracks the, the user device when you log in. You could uh, actually save uh, projects to catalogs. And you have your DM for DI, um, your DM Connect for DI uh, round tripping of MART models as needed. Uh, one of the new uh, great features of the visualization tools that Erwin has uh, provided is this ER360. It has the same feel as or same uh, function, uh, same functionality for using. Uh, for adding users, profiles, catalogs, your containers where your your harvested harvested data models from the Mart uh, are contained. Uh, but from there, once you have your data models in the, uh, you could browse the metadata, which is very similar to the Irwin's uh, ER, um, sorry, uh, Irwin um, web portal. Uh, you could set up views. Uh, you could also have an overview of the enterprise uh, architecture of those data models uh, that have been harvested into the uh, tool. You also have, uh, a similar to the uh, Mart portal, uh, a device setting where for, wh for whomever logs into the ER360, you have a place setter for um, tracking those those users that that are logging into the uh, tool and the settings for setting up your um, your email as well as changing uh, logos as needed so one of the um, one of the features of the mark portal uh, is the ability to take a, a data model <clears throat> uh, from the mark portal and harvest harvest that to uh, er360 so let me just go over and I'll show you
so from the Erwin Moore portal there, um, from the apps, you have your your um, your ability to 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 harvest a um, a data model or MOT model or MOT models to uh, to ER three sixty. So let me just select that one, and you'll see here it's very similar to the Irwin DI suite. You would set up a uh, job, and you could pick and choose a um, <clears throat> a uh, data model or a uh, a catalog. Once you have those selected, you would um, you would add those as a job, and you would get those uh, into uh, the ER360. So once those models have been harvested to ER360, this is the landing page for ER360, and I'm just going to log into. Oops. So uh, here's the landing page for ER360. Uh, the, for, the home page gives you a, um, you know, a, a little bit of a statistics of how many models that have been harvested, what your profiles are, and how many active users are, um, are part of the, the uh, ER360. Again, it's very similar to the MAR portal. You set up your users, whether it be, uh, um, a server user, you could import those users, and um, you could set them up as. Uh, even though I, I don't have a choice for the uh, Windows authentication, you could do that. You could also, I believe, you could set it up for an Active Directory. Uh, once you have your users, uh, the profiles here, you uh, the out of the box profiles that you that are set up either as a viewer or as admin. These are two customized uh, profiles that I added. And then once you have your, <clears throat> your profiles set up, you could start adding your users to as either the admin or any of these other um, profiles. So if I set myself as a test user and save the permissions, and if I assigned assign test viewer to let's say for example this this model called the Neo4j, when test viewer logs into the ER360, they'll they won't see any of the other models except for what they're what they're what's been assigned to them. Uh, so I only assigned the test viewer to uh, the Neo4j model. Catalogs are <clears throat> similar to um, your MAR portal where you have your containers where the, the models are saved to or harvested to. Um, a big part of the metadata browse, uh, I feel, is the ability to take a look at what, what your models look like after you've uh, harvest, harvested them from the MART itself. So if I just take a, a look at uh, the eMovies data model <clears throat> that's been brought in, uh, you'll see that it, it there are it's very very similar to how it appears in Irwin DM. Uh, it brings the colors over, and there's a couple of different uh, controls here. You could set up um, uh, the uh, tree, uh, just the uh, different ways to lay out. A nice feature here is you could look at the logical and physical um, representation of the data models. Uh, you can also um, you have your your ability to change uh, the uh, the way the um, the keys are set up, um, etc. So just a, a couple of different um, uh, ways to to bring your um, your data model from uh, the MART into ER360 uh, for, and 
one of the nice features here is, let's say I uh, I have a a non Irwin user that wants to see this representation. You could uh, copy this link and uh, set up an email, send it over to that that user that has a username and password, and they'll be able to uh, gain access and see this information uh, as needed. Uh, one of the the new uh, one of the features on uh, in ER360 is the ability to uh, publish a non, no uh, SQL data model. So if I take a look and I go into the drawing objects, you'll see that these are representations of the NoSQL data model, which is a, sort of a, a, an advantage of, um, of the uh, Irwin Web Portal, which um, didn't support the ability to bring in uh, NoSQL data models into uh, into that that into into that tool itself, we have um, <clears throat> we also have the Neo4j uh, data model here. If I just take a look at that one, you'll see that um, if I go to fields graph, it will it will um, it has a, a controller here that will uh, show you the uh, Neo4j representation of the data model itself as well. So again, this is a, a pretty, it's a nice tool um, uh, to consider for those users that uh, don't have Erwin installed, um, you could uh, you could take this and then send the, uh, the information over and assuming that they have a username and password, they'll be able to log in and see the, um, the uh, metadata. Of course, you have your, your searching uh, capability in the tool similar to Erwin Web Portal as well. So uh, let me just go back with uh, eight minutes left. I'd like to just go over, uh, some, you know, just a, a little summary. Uh, we went through the uh, robust uh, modeling techniques and flexibility showing the um, uh, some of the non-relational database target databases that Erwin supports, uh, NoSQL, Neo4j, uh, and and the project um, uh, Explorer that's new. We have uh, the data governance and enterprise glossary, uh, new features in the tool, and the enhanced collaboration with the Mod Portal and productivity um, features. Uh, as a separate uh, in, um, application is the ER360 that you can um, uh, collaborate with other users uh, that don't have Erwin installed. Uh, you could um, use that if they want to see that metadata as needed. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Robert. Um, Thanks, Kevin. For the uh, call to action. Yep. Uh, and just for our uh, users on the uh, webcast, if you do have any questions in the last couple of minutes, you can put them into the question box. Uh, we mentioned that at the beginning. Uh, just for some of our clients, uh, you know, if you, uh, and, and by the way, Kevin, thank you for doing an awesome job on providing updates on the, uh, the Irwin Mart or the Irwin Martin Cloud, if anyone's interested in it, the Irwin 360 the uh, enterprise uh, modeling compliance, the uh, glossary and the uh, project explorer. So uh, great features. Uh, most of them come in 12.5. Obviously the uh, Mart in the cloud is a feature for, uh, you know, uh, clients that want to upgrade to that environment. So there's a fee uh, to do that. So if any of our uh, clients either watching this video now or watching this video in the near future uh, are interested in having Sandhill a system in upgrading from previous versions, as I say, Kevin mentioned all the way from nine uh, to uh, the latest uh, 12 or uh, 2021, uh, you can contact us. Uh, you'll see my contact details at the end there uh, to upgrade uh, your Mart environment. Upgrading, if you don't have a model Mart, uh, I, I hope that by now you're seeing the need 
for the Irwin Mart. So if you'd like to actually purchase the Irwin Mart, uh, we'd be more than happy to coach you about how we can actually upgrade you to the Mart environment, help you get it set up, help you get it operational, help you get it installed. Uh, obviously, uh, Santel being in the Irwin business for now on plus uh, 20 odd years, uh, we uh, can obviously deliver training on the Irwin DM, on the Mart, on the E360, and anything else within the Irwin sphere. Uh, for our uh, Platinum clients out there, uh, thank you for being a Platinum member. Uh, you can email John or myself uh, to do a free lunch and learn. Uh, a deep dive into 12.5. So please uh, contact John or myself. Um, and, uh, you know, if you'd like to have a, a, a no cost, a technical consultation on upgrading, we'd be happy to provide that for you as well. Uh, for, any San, for any clients that are non Santel clients that you don't buy your software from us, you don't uh, have any kind of platinum support, uh, please do contact us. Uh, there's always ways that we can work through helping you out, uh, you know, whether it be through a training contract or uh, some other form of vehicle. So with that, um, I just want to just do a, a final kind of call out. Uh, if there are any kind of questions, uh, you know, I don't see any at the moment, but, uh, you know, um, by all means, let's go to the last slide, uh, Kevin. I just want to make sure that people have got sure. our uh, contact details. Uh, so do please take a chance to visit our website. Uh, www.sandhillconsultants.com. Uh, We're always there. We can show a lot of the latest information there and on the products. Um, you can always email myself, uh, robert.lutton at sandhillconsultants.com or john.kigan at sandhillconsultants.com. You can call me uh, at any time. And you can also follow us on social media as well. So uh, where I'm, hopefully some of you have seen some of the posts we've been uh, keeping up with the latest information. So with that, uh, with the last couple of minutes, uh, I'd just like to say that the 12.5 uh, Quest has done an amazing job in 12.5. Uh, lots of great features and technologies, uh, and they're not stopping there. Uh, let me just tell you that Irwin DM is the leading data modeling tool out there, uh, has got uh, thousands upon thousands of users out there, that like the tool, that support the tool, and Quest realize that and realize that there's a, a huge uh, install base into uh, the tool set and they're uh, aggressively targeting, keeping uh, it going, keeping it enhancing and enhancing the solution. We have seen the roadmap uh, for Irwin. We can tell you that it's, it's exciting. There's new stuff coming down the, the pipes. Uh, so please do, Keep an eye out uh, through us, uh, through uh, Quest, on the latest uh, features on that. And as this has been recorded, uh, we will send the link out to everyone uh, once we get it, uh, uh, the session finished. And we'll load it up under our YouTube channel, sandhillconsultants.com. Uh, so with that, I, Kevin, I don't see any other uh, there are questions, but uh, awesome job on the presentation, Thank Kevin. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And for our uh, users and clients and for Irwin users, uh, thank you very much indeed. And we will follow up in the near future with the link to the recording and see how we can actually help you going forward. And for all of us out there as we're heading into the holidays, uh, have a wonderful holiday break and uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, and enjoy the holiday celebrations for, for those that uh, celebrate it. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And thank you to Irwin Quest uh, for having us here. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. We'll be in touch. Have a nice day.